Here we're going to be working on an Asus laptop that came in for no power. By the way, I got a new cable for the microphone. Last time the microphone went bad. And I also got a clip so the cable does not pull off when I get up or sit down. So this has been taken care of. And now we're going to be working on an Asus laptop that came in for no power. Now right off the bat, I see liquid metal on the CPU. And I do see some spillage on the side. We do not know if this board was killed because of liquid metal, but we're going to have to find out. Let's take a look and see what's going on. We do not see any protection surrounding the CPU. So liquid metal did spill. Look at this. We do not know if any liquid metal went under the CPU. Because if that's the case, then most likely liquid metal shorted out the solder balls under the CPU. And maybe it's game over. But we do not know. We're going to have to find out. Let's look at the surrounding. We do see signs of liquid metal here. And right over here, we do not know how far inside liquid metal went. We do not know if anything went inside. We do see signs of liquid metal here also. And some here also. So let's try to clean what we see and hope for the best right now we do not know why this board is not powering on or why the laptop is not powering on and the cause may not be liquid metal but we just have to take it into consideration i mean the guy used liquid metal so he can improve the life of this laptop and it died anyway so what's the use? How much improvement are you getting with liquid metal? Is it worth it? Right now the customer has liquid metal on the CPU but not on the GPU. And we have more liquid metal here, which may cause a short between those two lines. Look at this. You see two very close traces. The first thing I want to do is start by measuring the MOSFETs, power MOSFETs, and see if we have a short. Right here. Meter in diode mode. 0 0.4 voltage drop. We do not have a short. How is the gate? 1.2 voltage drop, 1.2. And I'm okay with that. Let's measure those big MOSFETs, meter in resistance mode. We do not want to see a very low resistance on the gate of the MOSFETs. 
409k very good 280k we have 121k and we have oh 50 ohms 50 ohms is bad what if we measure gate to source and we have 5 ohms <laughs> so we have a problem here Two fifty-six k. Right now we have a problem, right over here. We do not know if the MOSFET itself is the problem or if the gate line or the source line is the problem. What happens if we inject voltage at the gate right now and see what amp draw we get? Right now, if we inject voltage at the gate. The amp meter is reading 0 0.01 amps, so I'm going to assume that's not a short, but most likely a problem with the MOSFET. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and desolder the MOSFET, replace it, and hope for the best. We're going to replace this and we're going to inspect other areas of the board. I do not want to give it to Big Bus to reassemble and then later find out that we have a problem elsewhere. So we're going to do this one time. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to ask him to reassemble it. We're going to invoice the customer for the repair attempt and send it back to him. So we're going to work on this one time. And the reason is because of liquid metal. I mean, look at the factory flux. So this component suffered a blow or a lot of heat. And usually I can tell by the burnt factory flux around the component. You can't always tell, but usually. Now that the MOSFET is out, let's go ahead and measure. And what do we have? Meter and resistance mode. Before we got something like 50 ohms here on gate. And now we have 170 ohms, but it's going up. And that's because the board is hot. So let's wait until the board cools down a bit. What if we measure the resistance between gate and source? All right, 5.5K, and that's good. That's better than 5 ohms. And I have a replacement MOSFET right over here. And let's measure again. We are now reading 194K. And of course, you cannot see it. or six K and that's because the board is still hot if we measure between source and gate now we have 58 K and that's perfect it's not 5 ohms but 58 K so let's continue measuring components on the board so we can make sure nothing else is wrong with the board aside from maybe liquid metal going under the CPU Quick visual inspection, and maybe we can measure the MOSFETs down at the CPU. The V-Core MOSFETs and the GPU MOSFETs. Let's measure the resistance right here. And we have 26K, that's good. 26K, that's good. 26.9, 26.9, and 26.9. No issues here. And we're going to do the same thing here. 9.8K. 9.9. 9. We have 9.8K. I'm talking in the case. Anything in the ohms, I'm going to mention it. 9.8K, which is good. 
That's good. Good. And we're good here. And a few more MOSFETs I want to measure. OK, 295K. 295K. As long as we're consistent on any one area. And as long as the reading is in the case and not very low as in 3 ohms, 4 ohms, or 10 ohms, or 50 ohms even. 294K, and we're good here. One thirty six K, one point one K, one thirty two K, one thirty two K, and what about here? One thirty two K. Hmm. Is source shorting with gate? Let me put the meter in diode mode. No short. And we should also worry about those tiny MOSFETs. All right, so nothing else obvious on this side of the board. But I do want to go over those MOSFETs here. Now we're going to flip the board. I want to quickly go over back of the board and see if there's anything obvious, especially on this side of the board. That's where all the components are. Because mostly back of the board is empty. It's not populated with components. But we do have components here. And we can check this one MOSFET on back of the board. This one lonely MOSFET. No neighbors, no wife, and no kids. And we have the RAM, integrated RAM. There's nothing else to check. I went over the board. And right now, if what we did does not fix the problem, we're going to deem it a no fix. And we're going to send it back to the customer. So let's see. I'll be back. While Big Bus is reassembling and testing the laptop, he gave me another board, another Asus laptop that does not power on. And the first thing I ask him is, when you plug the charger, does the charger shut off because of a possible short? And he said no, the charger did not shut off and it was still supplying 19 volts. So let's take a look at the board and see why the board is not powering on. Maybe we'll do two repairs in one video. Right now our charging connector is here and we have we should have power MOSFETs right over here. I mean every ASUS motherboard is different. Some of them are here, some of them are on the back, some of them are on the side. ASUS wanna play games. It's a gaming laptop, so let's measure right over here. And we do have a short. Of course. Of course we have a short. What's new? We're going to inject voltage and see what gets hot on the board. A person spends two or $3,000 on an Asus laptop, and that's what happens. Not just one laptop or two laptops or three laptops. We have over 37 Asus laptops on the shelf that we need to fix. Every single day we have Asus laptops come in, whether it's local or mailings. It's something that we fix on a daily basis. I'm going to inject voltage right over here. And right now, the meter is showing 1.9 amp draw. So definitely, we have a short. Thermal camera to the rescue. And let's see. So we're going to inject voltage at the shorted area of the MOSFET. Right here. 
and what is getting hot on the board. So I think I see something getting hot maybe in this area right here, which is under this copper shield. We're going to have to investigate further because we have a shield that may be blocking heat from showing up on the thermal camera. Let me just see what's under here. Yeah, we do have two MOSFETs here that we're going to have to check. And honestly, not much going on. So all I want to do is measure those MOSFETs. And we have to keep in mind this capacitor that we see here. Why don't we inject voltage and check under the thermal camera again to see if possibly this capacitor is what's causing the problem or if it's something else. Now heat is visible because we removed that copper shield. Right now, if we inject voltage, we see it right here, right over here. And what's here? Huh, right there. It's most likely this cap here. This cap is likely the problem. We got it. We got it. This gaming laptop when I play games. We got it. This laptop was not even born when I was playing games. Let's test right now to see if we still have a short. Meter in diet mode. And the short is gone. Awesome. The short is gone. We're going to replace the capacitor. And we're going to call this laptop a fix. Hopefully nothing else is wrong with the laptop. Let's replace the capacitor. And I have a replacement capacitor right over here. Done. The job is done. Let's measure for a short one more time before I give it to Big Boss to reassemble and test. 0 0.42 voltage drop. Great. All right, we're going to reassemble and I'll let you know the results for both laptops. So I heard Big Boss say that laptop number one, the one with the liquid metal, did not work. So we're going to give up on this. We're not going to work on it anymore. And we're going to invoice the customer for the repair attempt fee, plus return shipping, and send it back to him. Laptop number two, it's almost done. And we did not test it yet. So hopefully we have good news for that one. Bismillah. How you customer? Yes. Good. Laptop is fixed. And that one was a shorted cap. Thank you, big boss. Thank you. Oh, one more? Okay. So this one, he said, the battery connector. Right here, I see two missing pins. So maybe I'll include this one in the video. That way, three laptops in one video. Let's do it. We have this third Asus laptop that we're gonna fix the battery connector on. Right now I do see two ripped pads, data and clock. We'll fix it. And we do have the ripped connector right over here. As you saw, we already fixed one of the two laptops that we worked on. Laptop number one, the one with the liquid metal damage was a no fix and I knew it. I knew it. So I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. I do not wanna put myself into that rabbit hole where it's a never ending repair. As you can tell, I like to move on one device after the other, one device after the other. If I do see light at the end of the tunnel, I'll spend the time to work on the device. But on that one, I already measured most of the components on the board. And right now, there is no reason why I should work on it again, especially with the liquid metal damage that we already saw. So let's proceed with this one. 
and see how we're going to fix this. The supporting pads are already ripped, so we're not going to be able to support that connector via those pads. We're going to have to add hot glue on the sides. I mean, once the battery is connected, that battery is not going to go anywhere, so the cover is going to be closed. And whether we add hot glue or not add glue, it's not going to make a difference. But when the customer does decide to remove the battery, he has to hold on the connector and then pull on the battery. The first thing I want to do is, should we grind or no? To grind or not to grind? I do see the pad is connecting all the way here and all the way here. So right now there's no reason why I should grind this piece. We can connect the pad strip from here to here, from here to here. So we're not gonna grind. Data and clock do not require a thick wire. So let's see if we can work with this pad here. Or maybe we'll need a longer one. This one here. We're gonna grab two of them. And we're going to do pad strip number two. If you are new to the channel, those are pad strips number two. They can be purchased off our website at northridgefix.com. Click on shop. And look for pad strips or strips or pads or pad. All right, now let's take a look at the customer's connector and see what's going on. And what we want to do is remove this. See? We need to disconnect this metal piece here because we're not going to be able to see the pins if we have this. And just like that. That's number one. And number two, I'm going to apply UV mask onto those pads so they do not come off as we are applying heat from our soldering iron. Make sure the area is clean. I just applied UV mask onto that red blade and if that red blade can speak I wonder what it would say stop putting that green stuff on me that's what the blade would say that's enough we're gonna grab our 10 watt UV lamp And now all we need to do is apply some heat. And 
and UV mask is now rock solid. No problem. I applied hot air and the connector almost left to the nine dimension. Almost. But it's too big. It can run, but it cannot hide. No nine dimension for you. Stay in second dimension. The alignment is perfect. Let's solder some pins so we can hold that connector in place. And then we'll go over it pin by pin. Great. Now we need more solder, more flux. You see, when we do not have enough flux, our solder is going to spike. It's not going to be nice and round. Nice, shiny joints. And I'm not talking about the joints that you smoke. Luckily, I do not smoke. Because when I say joints, some viewers may have a light bulb that pops up over their head. And now all we have to do is test and make sure all the pins are making a proper connection. Meter in continuity mode. Let's put the fume extractor off so we can hear the meter. Let's test here to here, here to here, good. Let's test here to here and here to here, good. And now if we test here to here, we should not get a beep. And here to here, we should not get a beep and we should not get a beep. That's perfect. And finally, we're going to have to measure from we're going to have to puncture this mask here, from here to here. Good. And good. Very nice. Since we put a hole on that UV mask, let's apply UV mask again. I do not have to. But just to save scientists from complaining down in the comments. And again, our UV lamp. Now what we're going to do is melt hot glue. And we're going to apply some maybe right over here. And we're going to apply some and if we push on the connector, solid. Right now we do not need to do anything more. The battery is going to press down on the connector. We're going to close the back cover and the job is done. We're going to reassemble and test. We reassemble the battery and the laptop is on. Right there. Fixed. All right, that's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our forum. If you have any questions, just log into Northridge Fix, click on forum, and you can ask your question there. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.